Great. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the Life of a Student Athlete webinar. And it's, a, it's our hope that today some of our um, TSC alum can share some insights about their experience through the recruiting process and some of their college experience. So um, at this point, just to get things started, I'm going to ask each of them to tell you a little bit about themselves as we start this webinar. And we'll start with Whitley Cargile. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, as Ronnie said, my name is Whitley. I want to make sure I touch on everything. So I went to the University of Chicago, which is Division III. Um, also to note, I graduated high school in 2014, so I'm a little bit older than uh, some of the other girls on call. And I'm currently an investment banking analyst um, in New York City. Wow. Tracy? Uh, hello, my name is Tracy. I am currently going to be a sophomore. I am go to Trebekah, Nazarene University. It's a D2 school, and I'm currently double majoring in biology and chemistry. Madison Lauk. Um, I'm Madison Lauk. Um, I started at University of Miami. I transferred to University of Arkansas, where I finished um, just like yesterday. And um, I'm majoring in kinesiology and I am probably gonna go to chiropractic school either in the spring or the next year. Jesse Harvey. Hey guys, I'm Jesse. Um, I just graduated from the University of Georgia. Um, my degree is in psychology and I am going to Villanova University in the fall to play my fifth year of eligibility and uh, get a master's degree in human resources. Then Callie McKinney. Hey guys, I'm Callie. I just graduated from <clears throat> the University of Louisville and I studied exercise science with a minor in psychology and right now I am working in the hospital as a scribe because I want to do travel nursing while I'm also rehabbing from my ACL to go play professionally overseas. And then Mackenzie Furick. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I played soccer at Belmont and I just finished this past spring and then I'm going into pharmacy school at Belmont too. Well, as you guys can see, we have an awesome panel of, of uh, young women that have are ready to share some of their experiences with you. So the way this is gonna go is I'm gonna pose a question and I'm gonna ask one or two of the players to address it according to how their experience was in the recruiting process or, and or college soccer. And then at any time, if you guys have a question that you'd like to ask the panelists, all you have to do is hook up your chat and send it in the chat or you can put it into the Q&A. Both of those can be found at the bottom of your screen and Brandy will be keeping up with those and we'll add those in as we continue along, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna ask Whitley Cargill and Callie McKinney to talk about their college recruiting process and what other schools were they considering as they were going through this process and what were some of the things that led you to the school of your choice? Um, Callie, I guess I'll start and then um, you take it away. So uh, Brandy and Ronnie actually helped me a lot with my process. And as I said, I ended up going to Division Three, but I was trying to decide between really a Southeast D1 or a D3 in either the UAA, which is the conference, I'll get into the schools, but like a Wash U and Emory, um, U Chicago, where I ended up. And then I also looked at the IVs. So I went to the recruiting camps at Dartmouth, Princeton, Harvard, and a couple others, uh, Penn as well. Um, why I ultimately ended up deciding on the University of Chicago was kind of twofold. So one, as some of the players here mentioned, like they plan on playing uh, soccer after they finish graduating college. I knew that soccer wasn't likely to be a career for me and I wanted to go place, go to a place where I felt like, you know, academics were also prioritized uh, in addition to athletics. So I started off pre-med and ended up coming an econ major and as I said, ended up going to Wall Street. And my program was also successful. So I kind of had the academic side of the picture, but we also went to the final four in the national championship. So I think that, you know, it was a big decision for me to go D3. It was the only player on my team who did it. But ultimately for me, it was a really rewarding college experience because I got to do things you know, off the soccer field as well as um, 
obviously be successful on the field? Um, for me, Ronnie and Brandy also helped me a lot through the process. I, there were several schools that I visited and loved and really wanted to go to, um, to name a few, South Carolina, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, and Clemson. Um, I ended up ultimately choosing Louisville though because I loved the atmosphere at Louisville. I loved the facilities on the campus. They were really nice. Um, I loved my coaches and the people that they were and felt that they could help me develop into the soccer player that I wanted to be. And also it had um, some of like the faith-based stuff and I wanted to grow in my faith. And the Louisville FCA was a good place for me to be. So Kelly, can you talk a little bit about um, that facility that you got to play in all the time? I mean, University of Louisville has one of the best soccer stadiums in the country. Yeah, it, um, the feeling is absolutely unreal playing on that field and just the atmosphere. Uh, the men's team is really good, so they bring in a lot of support. And as when I first got there, we weren't that great, but the program got better and the support from all the other sports and um, teams were, were unbelievable. It was a good atmosphere to be in. And now, as you guys probably all know, Louisville is getting a women's pro team. And so that's going to be a real exciting step in the, the hierarchy of women's soccer and the development in that town. So that's really, really fun. So Whitley, I just want to touch one thing and circle back to you for a second. So University of Chicago is in downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what it's like to attend a school that is within a city? Sure. So yeah, that was another big debate. I don't know how much you remember, but we talked a lot about that. And I looked at places like a WNL, Washington and Lee, that is in really rural Virginia. Um, I loved being in a city. What I always said was I wanted a campus where campus was its own entity. And I don't like DePaul is another city in Chicago that really feels like you're inside a city or an NYU where you can't tell where a building is for NYU versus just M Manhattan. U Chicago had its own campus where you could kind of, I guess, like foster that campus environment, but then you also had access to downtown and everything that comes with that, whether it was just like trying new restaurants, but also internship opportunities and just getting more of those experiences um, and seeing another city besides Nashville, which I thought was really good for me during my college experience. Well, you obviously like it because you're still there, right? I am. I'm in Chicago right now. Yeah. So that's great. Thank you, guys. So let's go on to the next one. And I'm going to direct this one at Madison Lauk and Mackenzie Furek. If you're going through the college recruiting process, is there anything you would have changed in how your process went? So Mackenzie Furek, you went to Belmont and stayed relatively local and close to home. And Madison, you went to University of Miami, which was pretty far away from Murfreesboro, which you called home. So is is there, were you guys overly excited about your decisions, really happy about it? What would you possibly have done differently, if anything, in your recruiting process? Um, okay, I'll start, Mac, and then you can yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> um, so I had a pretty short recruiting process because University of Miami gave me a deadline, and so I had to decide really quick if that's where I wanted to go. And so I only got to visit a couple schools before that. And because I pretty much knew once I went that they were going to give me that deadline. So it kind of just, I didn't want to stay in Tennessee. I wanted to go somewhere else because I've been in Murfreesboro pretty much my whole life. And I wanted to experience something else. And like pretty much everyone from high school around me and stuff goes to like University of Tennessee or like MTSU. So I wanted to be different and like, you know, go experience different things. So Miami like ended up being the right choice for me. But if I had to do it again, I probably would have tried to take longer with the recruiting process so I could have weighed out more options and like decided. And I also didn't fully like know the playing style I was getting into. And that's the ultimate reason why I transferred because they were more of a technical side and like, like to play pretty passes and things like that. And anyone that knows me knows I can't do that. So I ended up having to, or I ended up deciding to transfer to a program that was more like aggressive, high press and things like that. So I would probably just take more time and like really like get into like, or know what I was getting into. 
Um, for me, I went to Belmont, and when I picked Belmont, I was so excited. My dad played baseball at Belmont. I had grown up in the Belmont athletic community, um, so it was definitely, like, a huge deal for me to get to go to Belmont. I think looking back during my recruiting process, I definitely would have been more open-minded looking at it because there were some schools that, like, just by the name, I was like, there's no way I'm going there. Just by location, I was like, there's no way I'm going there. And I think looking back, I just would have not has discounted other schools as quickly and not has zoned in on one over another in a certain way. And just really be open-minded. You never know when you're 18 what you're going to – Or I mean, I guess I committed when I was a junior, so I was 16, 17 – you don't know exactly what you want. So just be really open-minded. Look at all the schools, even if you don't necessarily see yourself there, still go on a visit, still try it out. Like you never know till you're there and on the campus. So those are two really good points that they made. And one of them was being patient in the recruiting process, which we all know is really difficult to do. And those of us that are on the panel right now, they're nodding their heads. There's a lot of pressure that comes with the college recruiting process, some self-imposed and some imposed by the, the schools that are recruiting you. And so I think that was a really wise statement from Madison saying that we really need to stay patient in the process. And then another wise statement from Mackenzie saying be open-minded and consider things outside of your normal box, or your normal comfort zone, because you never know what type of door would open up or what you might like in the future, right? So thanks, you guys. The next one that I would say, I'm gonna put this to Jessie. So Jessie went to the University of Georgia and she's gonna share a little bit about her experience. But what were some of the challenges that you faced on the field and maybe off the field being a student athlete at an SEC type school? Um, I think I'm fairly well vested in this department. Um, I actually, underwent three major surgeries during my time at Georgia. So my freshman year, I tore my labrums and my hips back to back. Um, so kind of right off the bat, a little discouraged. Um, thought I was coming into college, um, you know, never really had any major injuries until then. So it was kind of like a shock um, having to go through that, you know, right away. So. Um, but I think with adversity, I think it makes you more mature and stronger. And I think that's definitely the case for me. Um, it made me grow up a lot quicker. Um, and I think, you know, you guys can probably attest to this too. Coming into college, you're on a high horse and, you know, you expect to start, expect to start, you know, um, and you're fighting for a spot and you want that spot, you know, no one wants to sit on the bench. So. I think kind of being knocked down a few pegs um, during my first year was something that I really needed and um, kind of a blessing in disguise, as I like to call it. Um, and I think it just kind of prepped me for, you know, the rest of my career and kind of molded me into the person that I am today. And I think one of the biggest things too, for me, just being sidelined with injuries kind of gives you a new love for the game or just reminds you how much what you love the sport. So that was definitely one of the biggest things for me. And I think just, you know, going through adversity and coming stronger on the other side is, you know, one of the biggest things that I went through in college and one of the biggest lessons I'll take away from college soccer. So, yeah. So so let's circle back. One of you had adversity before you even stepped on campus at the University of Georgia, right? So you were recruited by one coach who then left the program and you then signed your national letter of intent and went and played for a coach that didn't recruit you, right? Yeah. So that poses a lot of challenges. And then there were challenges with your hip injuries and your knee injury. And for those of you guys that don't know, those are significant major reconstructive long periods of time with rehab that Jesse had to go through to endure. And I think she is a, a true testament to resilience. And I'm so happy to hear that she found strength through all of this experience. 
I'd love for her to comment a little bit about what it was like to be recruited by one coach and play for another because it happens often in college soccer where you get recruited by one and a coach may retire, coach may leave the program, they may make a coaching change. And your love for that school is what's really important moving forward and your love for playing in that program. So Jesse, can you speak to that a little bit? And I know it was a challenge because you didn't know that coach at all, but can you give some words of wisdom for that? Yeah, I think it's definitely, you know, when you're in recruiting, anyone will tell you, you know, fall in love with the school, don't fall in love with the coach. And that's definitely the case. Um, I'm living proof. <laughs> so I think, you know, definitely fall in love with the school. I love Georgia. I would have gone there if I didn't have soccer. Um, but I think when it comes to coaching changes, it's definitely a tough thing, especially mine was before I got there. So I didn't really get to go through with the coaches that I committed to. Um, so I think, you know, if I could go back and I rethink that day, I'll, I remember exactly where I was when I found out and I was on the way to practice with Ronnie. Um, and, you know, she gave me words of wisdom. She knew Billy Lucine, my coach, well um, from Duke and I trusted her opinion and she was right, Billy's a great coach. Um, but I think when it comes to committing to a coach that then leaves, um, I would, I wish I would have gone another another visit. Um, I didn't have time um, necessarily because it was kind of right before signing day. But I think, you know, go get to know them. You know, yep. those are going to be your coaches and the people that you're around every day. So definitely go meet them, go be around them. Um, and if you don't mess with them, you don't mess with them. And then you know we got to look somewhere else. But um, I definitely think, you know, familiarizing yourself with your coaches as well as your team, because if there's not a good connection there, then you're not going to be happy. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit outside of college soccer, and I'm going to go to you, Tracy. Tracy, can you tell me a little bit about what the experience is like being a student athlete at Trevecca? day in and day out, what it's like to be a student athlete in your environment? So being a student athlete for me, um, it was kind of really like hard to, at the beginning because I clearly picked like challenging majors and I value academics and soccer. So it's kind of hard finding that balance. But um, at Trebekah, it was really good because for the fall season, we could leave on Wednesday, be gone, and come back on Sunday. So you miss like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of schooling. And so it was really important to get to know your professors and like get make that connection so that you could keep up on your schoolwork, like keep up with it and stay on top of it. And honestly, like time management was like the most important skill that I had to like learn. Time management. I can imagine. So do you guys train in the morning or in the afternoon? Um, in the fall season, we would train in the afternoon, but then in the spring, we would have morning workouts and then sometimes additional afternoon training. So did you have a lot of weight room time too in the spring? Yeah, in the spring, we would have three early morning, like 6 a.m. Uh, lifting, and then it would be afternoon training, which would be either running or with the ball. So what would you say is your favorite part about being a student athlete at Trevecca? Um, I really like the team. Like it was a great way coming in as a freshman. It was kind of just like being able to meet new people and you shared like the same interests with soccer. And then I got to meet people who also like academically share the same passions. So it was like a great way to like make new friends coming in. And do you, you live on campus, right? I commute. You commute, okay. And so have you've made, do you have any international teammates? Um, not at the time, but we have an assistant coach who's from Brazil and she literally graduated last year. But then on the boys team, they have tons of international people. So like I've gotten to know the boys team as well and seen that aspect as well. That's great. Thanks, Tracy. So let's, that's going to segue me into the training schedule. So I'm going to put three, I'm going to ask three of you. And if any of you want to contribute anything to this conversation, please feel free. 
So we're going to talk about the difference between the fall, which is the competitive season when you're actually playing counting games, the off season, which is in the winter months, and then your spring season. And so I'd like to ask a few of you to talk about that a little bit. And I've asked Jesse and Whitley and Tracy because we're going to have a division one, a division two and a division three perspective and what the schedule looks like and how it differs. And then Madison McKenzie and, and Callie, please feel free to jump in because you've had that same division one experience that Jesse has. So let's start. Who wants to go first? Whitley, you want to start with division three? We'll work our Honestly. way. I'm, I'm kind of thinking just start with D1 and then I can kind of highlight the differences that I see at the D3 level. Love that about you, Whitley. You're good leader. Excellent. You're a whole other level than us. <laughs> that is what a top five education gets you, right? There. She's running, she is running the next podcast. I mean, the next webinar. Yeah. So I'm saying, you just got yourself a job. Yes. All right, Jesse, let's go. Yeah, so in the fall, um, it's kind of, I don't want to say lighter load because it's not, but I think we lift not as heavy and less frequently. So we would do morning lifts on um, Tuesday, Thursdays, and then we'd practice in the evenings to Tuesday through Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, depending on our game schedule for the weekend. Um, and then Mondays would be off days and like completely off nothing. So that was mainly fall. Um, and you know, the practices got lighter as the week went on. So we weren't heavy legged for the weekend. Um, and then Saturdays were usually like a cool down jog and stretch kind of day. Um, usually in between games or if we didn't have a game Sunday, it would be more of a practice style. And then, so that's kind of the breakdown for the fall. Um, and then kind of going, transitioning into spring, we kind of ramp up the weights. Um, so it would be more frequently. So we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday lifts. And they would be, you know, obviously not heavier right off the bat, but gradually get heavier as um, we go on because spring is for building. So, um, <laughs> that's kind of how the spring starts and then we kind of get into more playing with we did futsals futsal on mondays um which is you know soccer in a basketball court not fun for a goalkeeper but <laughs> that's what we did mondays usually at 6 a.m um and then we would have that on mondays we'd have a weight session in the evening which would um also entail some sort of conditioning session and then um, Tuesday through Friday, we would do um, just, you know, early morning weights or just a practice in the evening. So it kind of depends in the spring. It's not always as consistent, especially um, in January when we have the eight hour rule where we can't be together as much. Um, but yeah, spring's definitely more for building muscle and um, kind of getting our fitness up to prepare us to kind of go through the summer and keep working whereas fall is kind of like maintaining and trying not to be too heavy legged for the weekends yeah and before we we go into tracy with the division two i think one of the the main things as you're going through the college experience is fall is about competing and winning right it's a it's results driven um every game matters every performance matters and everything is focused on getting the results so you can continue playing as late as you possibly can into the season. And then you have a little bit of time to regenerate and recover, but then it turns into a bit of an individual training time where now you get to self-regulate and you have to work on your own individual game. And then the spring goes into a lot of individual improvement. So really you're looking at different types of cycles. You have a cycle of Winning is a premium and performance and results are a premium. You have an individual based time period where you have to make sure you get caught up in all your classes, get yourself taken care of and get yourself on a good individual routine. And then you're back in with your team again, but then there's more improvements that have to happen during that period of time. You may have more playing time. Results are not as important in the spring, but your individual performance and development is really important, right? So before we hop out of that, Callie or Mackenzie or, or Madison, you have anything to add to that? 
Um, for us in the fall, just something that's a little bit different is on the, we would play, I think on Thursdays. And, um, if you were like, I guess a main starter, you contributed and played, let's say 60 minutes or more the next day after the day of the game, um, we would have split squads. And so we would train the people who didn't, I guess, you know, get as many minutes, they would train and then the others who played significant minutes, they would go in and do like a yoga session or just like a cool down type thing, stretching thing. So regeneration for those. So they monitored your minutes so that they didn't wear down mm -hmm. your body. So mm -hmm. those of you, one of the challenges of college soccer is if you're not getting a significant amount of minutes during the game, you're not getting that day of a fitness base that can keep you at the level to be able to compete. And so it's either put on yourselves or your coaches have to change the training rhythms depending on the amount of minutes that you participate. One, they have to preserve and regenerate if you have a lot of minutes and a lot of um, time on your legs, as well as, as make sure that those of you that are not getting that fitness base during the games or that game time experience, that you will be ready when your name is called to get into the game. So you have to maintain your fitness. So it's a challenge mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we do for spring is like we split into specific groups like defenders will go on like the certain time midfielders or whoever so that way we can like individualize more like our training and that's what we do oh that's good I like that too yeah I would say our schedule at Belmont is pretty consistent with what Jess said um with the spring and fall so, so let's move on to uh, Division Two. Tracy, can you share a little bit about the different types of seasons that you have within your school year? Yeah, so mine's not that that much different to the D1. It's more fall season. We did little to like none really lifting. I didn't start lifting with the team till spring. Um, then for my like fall season, it would be we would have our games on Thursday. And then Friday would be like the same thing where we'd have split training where like the players, some of them would go and train while others would have like a recovery day. And then on, we would also potentially have games on Saturday. And then you would sometimes have like Sunday off as like a whole kind of team recovery day. Um, and then as far as spring season, it was lifting um, Monday, Wednesday. Then Friday was more of like a fitness running uh, 6 a.m. training. Then we would have afternoon trainings um, on Tuesday, Thursday for sure, and then sometimes on Monday just to like start the week off like strong. Um, yeah, it wasn't that far off it more than the, what the players were talking about. Whitley, what about you? Division three has some different types of rules, don't they, regarding their yes. spring season? And you guys can still hear me, right? Looks like my video went out. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I would actually say in the fall, it was pretty similar to what uh, everyone else kind of spoke about. Depending on if we had two games or one game, it kind of determined our travel schedule. So that's kind of the first thing I would say it's different is we probably travel a little bit less. Um, but we also had conference games that were in Boston, New York, and Atlanta. So we kind of put those games together and traveled to multiple places over what we called like UAA weekends. Um, but for the most part, we didn't miss a ton of class, which would be a big difference, I would say. Um, and then in terms of what we did during the week, we did two morning practices. So Monday, Wednesday were always morning. So people who were um, pre-med could hit labs in the evenings because labs weren't really flexible around practice schedules. And then we would do, um, I guess, usually Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday were afternoon practices and a little bit harder get like good training sessions in Monday Tuesday and then kind of as people said taper off to prepare for games and usually use those as more tactical sessions kind of talking about style of play we were going to see or something like that um, the biggest differences I would say with D3 is in the off season so my school was on the quarter system so in the winter we really just did futsal once a week um, unfortunately, it was like at 11 p.m. because D3 sports varsity teams don't get as much priority, I think, as D1. So we kind of had to work around other schedules. Um, and then we would do weightlifting on our own three times a week. 
And then the biggest difference too in the spring is NCAA rules, and I'm pretty sure this is still the same, only allow 15 practices for the entire spring season. So the way our school split it up was we did five weeks of morning practices, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, followed by lifting sessions. And then we did one game, which is the only thing that we were allowed to do. So we always played DePaul, which was pretty fun because it was like the one D1 team we got to play each year. Great. Thank you, guys. And I'm sure there'll be some questions regarding some of that when uh, – when people get a chance to start asking some. So, I mean, as you can see, pretty similar experiences, but probably different timelines. Everyone has a premium on individual training and everyone has a premium on performance. And everyone is focused on results during certain parts of the season and then development during other parts of the season. So as we, we continue to, to hit, stay on that kind of topic, can you tell me some of the things that helped you prepare for your college life, being ready for the grind of college athletics or the college experience in the classroom? And I was going to ask Mackenzie and Madison and Callie to address that, but any of you are welcome to join in again. Take it away, ladies. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Okay. Um both of the colleges I went to fitness was like a must. Like we had like, we had minimums we had to hit at Miami. I had three different tests that we had to run. You had to pass two of them or else like you probably wouldn't play. So I would say like, you really like, I know coaches emphasize that, but like they mean it, like they, they really care. And if you're not fit, you're not going to be able to last a game. Like college pace is just like completely different. And, you think that you're ready for it because we play at such a high level for club, but like, it's just a different world. So I would say that that's a really big thing for soccer to be prepared for. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> no, man. Um, yes, Callie and Madison can all speak, but I feel like we emphasize fitness so much on our team coming into Belmont. That wasn't a pro as much as a problem. I know for myself, a lot of the transition was as soon as like classes started because it wasn't a, like, okay, you go to high school all day and then you have soccer. It was, I was waking up at 6 a.m. going to practice and running to nine o'clock class. And then I had to eat and then I had weights later and then I had a night class. So it was kind of just a different rhythm than I was used to. And it was kind of just adjusting to that it takes a bit of time. And it is the next level for a reason. You have to be ready to perform on and off the field, especially just being woman athletics. Um, so it definitely, I think the biggest way to prepare for that is it's hard. You just kind of got to wing it. Out. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I think for me, truly, it, you get out of it what you put in it. So just working as hard as you can before. Um, I know coaches send out a lot of like packets before you go into college. And as long as you stick to the packet and do what the packet is saying. And um, I don't know if you guys know Coach Kylie or anything, but she helped me a ton before I went to college. Also, uh, my dad helped me a lot as well, preparing me. So I think just work hard and you'll get rewarded for it. The only thing I'd add is, and it's something I wish I did, is really go into it with an open mind um, in all aspects of the word. I think, you know, I was personally coming off of a national championship. I still wear my ring every day um, <laughs> with Callie Whoop. and Ronnie, of course. Yeah. And so I was kind of on this high horse, I think. And I kind of walked into, you know, summer practices, like I kind of owned the place, which really wasn't okay. Um, one, because I was a freshman and two, because I wasn't good enough yet. <laughs> um, so I think going into it, you know, it's okay to have confidence. Um, and I think you should have confidence, but I think there's a fine line between confidence and cockiness and going into it with the mindset of I'm better than everyone. And I deserve to be playing really isn't fair. 
Um, and I think going in with an open mind and kind of having the idea that I'm going to earn my place here is the best decision you can make for yourself. Those are all really wise words. And, you know, I think uh, the big thing is, is don't expect anything to be given to you, right? Would you guys agree that with that? Yeah. Kind of coming yeah. in to an environment where everyone wants to play and everyone wants to succeed and it's highly competitive and you have to be ready to compete and you have to be ready to compete on a consistent basis. The day that you decide that competing isn't for the, you is the day someone else is gonna get one step up on you. I mean, they're all nodding their head, but that all comes from internal drive. And so I think one of the things that they would say to you right now is start now with that and your self-regulation. And in the middle of this pandemic right now, it is such a great opportunity to stretch yourself and figure out what exactly the limit is for you to be able to achieve. And what you'll find is that you're going to achieve that step and then you move to the next one and then you'll hit that and you'll move to the next one. But self-regulation and self-training skill set is irreplaceable at the college level absolutely an intangible quality to be able to self-regulate and have some self-discipline and you guys are getting you know unfortunately right now with some disappointments and not having a season to play you get the opportunity to train yourself and try to better yourself as an individual player and I think that's what they're all trying to say to you too at the same time so we're getting closer to asking the question so I have two questions for the group and then we'll open it up for everyone so the first thing I would say is if you had any advice to give these players that are just starting their recruiting cycle or just finishing their recruiting cycle, what would you give them for advice regarding the process and or the college experience in playing soccer? One thing that I would say or one piece of advice I would give is don't compare your process to anybody else's your process is unique and it's yours and own it and believe in yourself and go for what you want and just don't compare to anybody else's process and don't and as a player don't compare yourself as a player to other players great advice like i said earlier just take your time with it like i for our team we have people commit super early and then we have people that waited all up until like junior senior year so like you like she said don't compare it and like if you think you need more time then take that time I mean some schools might the deadline might pass but the de that might mean that's not the right place for you so having said that hey Maddie right now Maddie having said that if you had it to do all over again because you know you said you had that deadline would you still commit there or would you have said you know what I'm not ready to make that decision yet um at the time, like, I really, really felt like that was right for me. But, like, I would have found out more about, like, the playing and things like that. I probably wouldn't do it over because I'm happy with, like, my decisions and, like, my experiences there. And it helped me grow as a player and a person. So I probably wouldn't do it differently. But I would definitely advise for other people to, like, learn from, like, my experiences and, like, not have to be put in that same situation. Good. The only thing I would add is – in the in the regard of taking visits and going on visits I would tell anyone going on a recruiting trip to if you're able to spend the night with the girls and have time to be around them do it like these are the people that you're going to be with every single day for the next four years and if you you know like I said earlier if you're not clicking with these people then it's not going to work on the field either and you're not going to be happy so I think taking the time to spend the night with some of the girls or, you know, go grab lunch with some of them or just kind of talk to them and get a feel for what the group is like, you know, what the team is like, the dynamic of the girls and the coaches, and just kind of like get a feel for if that would work for you and your personality. Because I think, you know, that would make the, the world of the difference because that's, you know, those are your people at the end of the day, like that's who you're going to be around. That's who are going to be your best friends that's your sorority in a sense like those are your people so i think getting to know them and making sure that you're going to click well with them is so important yeah kind of going off what jess said too like 
the team is important and then also look at the culture of the school and if that's something that you want to be a part of like I mean an SEC school versus a Belmont is like night and day comparison versus a U Chicago just like where the school is the kind of majors they have at the school you just kind of want to make sure that the school is a good fit for you not just the soccer program but the school as a whole anybody else <laughs> so i would say um one of the the things that is is important is the experience and and i don't think that i started this and and told you my name so i'm ronnie woodard and i work at tennessee soccer club and I coach in the ECNL. So I don't think I told you guys any of that when I started. I was so super excited about 12 our people on our panel that I didn't talk about that. But the last question I have to them before we open it up is if you could sum up your college experience in five words or less, what would that be? Can I get back to you? Yeah, like. <laughs> Anybody have it? So I, and it's not five or less. So I played at Duke and it was the most challenging and exciting time of my life. Those four years of college soccer was, were amazing. Um, the challenges were daily. You achieved new goals that you didn't know you had in you. You were challenged to take leaps of faith at different times and to stretch your body and your mind like you didn't know that you could. And it was incredibly rewarding experience. And so what I would say for my part is college soccer was worth every minute I invested in it. It was a positive experience. It created the person that I am. It helped me grow and mature into a young woman and it empowered me to have a larger voice and I felt stronger through that experience. And so I'm assuming that these girls that are shaking their head right now on the panel felt the same way, but I wanna give them the opportunity and they could use more than five words evidently. If they <laughs> want to share anything about how it may have changed them or their path for where they were going. I can do it in two words, major growth. <laughs> no. good, good. That, that would be my my take on that <laughs> yeah I can um, kind of add on I guess to what Ronnie said and probably a few more words um, but for me I think the biggest thing was as you touched on how much your teammates influence um, where you kind of go in your life and what you kind of do with it and obviously for me d3 it was kind of focused outside of soccer as well as obviously with the team but I started off pre-med and thought I was going to be a doctor and then looked around and saw teammates who were doing all these other things majoring in different things so I ended up taking economics courses and becoming an econ major and then you know through a connection I actually work for a teammate's father is like the head of my firm so my soccer team is like really who did um, I guess propel my career in a way um, and then I think outside of that obviously like we've grown up being in team environments our entire life. And that was something that I was not ready to give away when I went to college. So I think it's just incredibly special to go through those four years with a group of girls, women, excuse me, who kind of see you grow and where you start versus where you finish um, is just really exciting and creates lifelong friends. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Whitley, as well as Ronnie, kind of on both ends. Um, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today without everything I went through in undergrad and, you know, going through those injuries. I didn't even mention my final injury was it ended my senior year. I didn't even get to have a senior season. So that's why I'm going to Villanova. But I think even after that, I thought I was done. Like I was like, that's strike three, you're out. Like we're not, we're not going anymore. We don't have it in you. But I think that, love that I've built for soccer over so many so many years of playing and especially in college with being sidelined I think is what kind of made playing a fifth year even a possibility um otherwise I really don't think I would have found it in me um so I think I can definitely attest to 
how much college soccer challenges you and drives you every single day and kind of forms you to be the strong person that you are. And also on the family aspect, I have met my best friends. Like they're going to be in my wedding. I live with all of them right now. Like they're like, these people are people that you see every minute of every single day for four years. And that's something that you can't get anywhere else. And it's honestly, it's incredible. Okay, so Ronnie, we guys have, we have 10 minutes left. So for, I know we've already got one really good question from the uh, attendees. If anybody else has any questions they wanna throw in the chat, go for it. Um, one good question we had, and this is open to anybody, but I'd love to hear the difference again between division one, two, and three. Um, Maddie Amstutz had a great question. What does the summer look like? And I know it's- Track season. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm running. So let's have, let's one of you, let's do division one, two, and three. So Tracy, tell us what it, summer looks like. Cause I guess you just, well, you had, what well, I guess you just came in. This is your, you're just finishing your freshman year. Yeah, this is, I had, so last summer I had a summer packet and this summer I had a summer packet. And one thing I can for sure say is definitely do it because <laughs> might have slacked last semester and freshman year coming in kind of slap in the face. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, it's like they give you them for a reason and they're not like that, that long of workouts, but like whenever you do them, like put like a hundred percent of the effort in because like coming in, like, like all of them said, fitness is like a real, like they value fitness, um, a lot. So coming in fit is just like one more extra step to like getting more playing time and, you know, earning your spot on the team. So Tracy, but with the, in addition to the fitness, it, uh, let's say barring COVID happening, does, um, would you at Trebekah, would your coach require you to come to school early or were you just like for summer school or can you go right when like preseason starts? Um, we have like a couple weeks um, before preseason starts that um, were led by seniors. So they were senior led and it was like a good way to get to know the team and like kind of the um like vibe of the team before and then preseason would come and then that's when the coach would come and you would have all your fitness tests any uh, division one what's um summer look like for you guys y'all have to go early before preseason we had to go summer too yeah we did as well. had to like unless you had a really good reason to not be there you were expected to be there like did y'all take summer classes and then train with the team yes Yes. Whitley, yeah. tell us what your summers were like. Yeah, so ours were pretty different. I think that's probably the biggest difference. Um, we also got a packet going into freshman year. I did every single day, every single workout. Um, and ob not obviously, but I guess Brandy knows we killed fitness. And that really did help with um, playing time. Then it really changed. I started doing banking internships, honestly, and I couldn't really prioritize fitness. And so as everyone kind of talked about, you know, pushing yourself and whether that was getting an early treadmill workout in before I went to my internship um, or playing on the weekends, I kind of did that. But it was honestly less of a priority during the summer. And then I came in with the mentality of once I got there for preseason, it was all soccer and kind of focused on ramping back up. So I would definitely say there was a trend where, you know, first years came in and weren't working during the summer and kind of killed it. And it took some of the returners, especially me, my senior year, a little bit more time um, to kind of, I guess, hold, you know, whatever fitness I had going into the summer. Great. So we've got another question, another really good one um, from Mason Wells. How understanding were coaches with classwork and teachers with soccer commitments? So for me at Belmont, a lot of the reason why I chose to go to Belmont was because I wanted to pursue a career in pharmacy, which would mean I would start grad school early. So at the end of my career, I was doing grad school and soccer. And I have nothing but praise to give to Belmont about how awesome they were about um, just teachers and uh, coaches from both ends were very understanding of my demands with academics and grad school. My schedule was set. I wasn't allowed to change or pick my time of classes. So there was like 
one day during the week that I couldn't make practice. So my coach would stay after and I would have an individual session with her, which I, I mean, I am so thankful for Belmont in that regard that I was able to pursue a major that I really wanted to while playing college soccer. For D2 as well, they were really understanding about that. Like if you told your coach what was happening, she was really like understanding because she's like, she understood that you were here for academics and soccer. And then the professors would also be like, if you told them you were leaving like to travel these days or something, they would either like give you your work ahead of time or like were really good with like allowing you to like email them and stay connected. I think most professors were understanding, but coaches can only schedule like their practices around classes so much. So like it, sometimes you would have to wait to take a class in the summer or like, so I had to be there summer one whenever I didn't want to be, but I had to because it wouldn't fit into my schedule in the fall. So, or in the spring. So, I mean, it's just, you just have to balance it. Okay, so before we run, I'm going to turn it back up to Ronnie in just one second, but I have a question that I thought about. So many girls, when they look at, go through the recruiting process and they look at wanting to go play at the big schools, so some of you could play at the big division one schools and they think, oh, I can't wait, I want to go to football games and I want to do, have this great social life. So tell us, those of you, I see Madison shaking her head, how many football games did you guys get to go to? <laughs> Um, this year was better than the other years. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> so let's say maybe like five total. For all four years? Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think I topped five. Yeah. I probably topped five. <laughs> <laughs> but you can only say, you can only say for the half, so. Yeah, yeah we had a rule on that too. We did too. I you will say it varies from school to school, and I can only speak on SEC just from talking to other schools because we had a, we really got into our coaches girls about the Notre Dame game when they came to UGA this year. So we got a We got a quarter out of it, but we had to fight them a little bit. But um, <laughs> oh my God. we were just talking to other schools too about, you know, what their coaches allow and things like that. And it, it definitely school to school, yeah. you know, who were going to every game they could, like there was no question, yeah. but I think, you know, co different coaches have their, perspective on social life and how much they want you to be doing when you know there's a game that weekend or you know practice the next day and with team rules and things like that it'll, it'll vary school to school but yeah we were we were definitely on the stricter side yeah I would yeah. say Thanks, my, coach super, <laughs> my coach was super open-minded and wanted us to go out and support a lot of the other uh, a lot of the other sports so I know for us on Saturdays, we would have practice Saturday mornings and then you would see us, you would see some of us like showering and walking over to the stadium. Um, but some people would shower and go home because they were tired from practice and stuff. It just kind of depended on what you wanted to do, but um, she would only let us stay a half if we were in town and could go to the games. So choose a basketball school. <laughs> Moral of the story. For real. Who's a basketball school? That's right. That's yeah, that's choice. true. <laughs> I'm like, bye, I'll be at every game. <laughs> yeah, basketball, you can go to every game. Yeah. True. All right. Um, I don't, I think the other question we had was already answered about schools scheduling classes or scheduling your classes around practice. Um, I think that was already answered. So, Ronnie, I'll turn it back over to you. So, as, as much as I'd love to, to keep in chat, with these girls. We do have the boys seminar that's coming on in, in less than a minute, but I do want to make sure that I thank you guys appropriately. We have, and Jesse alluded to it, but we do have four players on this call, Madison and Jesse and Callie and Mac that all played in the national championship for U.S. Youth Soccer, and they won the first national championship. There's the ring for Tennessee Soccer Club. Um, and so they had an interesting experience of playing the national championship, getting on a plane and all going directly to preseason. And that was kind of how their club career ended. But so we have a national, four national champions with us. We also mm -hmm. have Whitley who played in an NCAA final four at the division three level. So and national championship. 
and a championship. That's right. Yeah. Which is years. absolutely yep. amazing. And so she has that accomplishment. And I wish we had more time to talk about that. We're just going to do a whole seminar and we're going to let Whitley lead it. And we're going to get her whole journey because I think that I think we'll have a lot of people that'll be tuning into it. And then lastly, I want to make sure that we thank Tracy, who is the only one on here who is a current player. And the sky is the limit. You have fans that are going to be cheering you on from Tennessee Soccer Club. We love that you're local and we know that you're going to achieve great things in 2020. <laughs> thank you. So special thanks to everyone that attended. Thank you to Brandy. Thank you to all of our Tennessee Soccer Club alum. We're super proud of everything you accomplished and everything that you're going to be in the future. <laughs>